Greetings. I'm Pastor Milton Rean Jr., Senior Pastor of Kingdom Builders right here in Birmingham, Alabama. What an awesome opportunity it is this Wednesday night to be able to share the word of the Lord with you. It's Wednesday in the word. I'm asking you to do me a favor. Uh, do yourself a favor. Do a friend or a family member a favor. Text somebody. Tag somebody and tell them to tune in right now. That's right. The Kingdom Experience Facebook Live and or YouTube. Uh, whatever method you're using to uh, view this tonight, I want you to uh, share it with somebody else so it can bless them. And I'll give you just a moment. I see a few of you coming in, uh, a few of you coming in. Good. Good to see you this evening. Good to see you. We'll give you just another moment to share it with somebody else, to give them an opportunity to log in as we get into this word. And while you're doing that tonight, we're going to be in Matthew chapter four. We'll be in Matthew chapter four. And I'm looking forward to what God is going to say. So share it with somebody. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you tonight. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you. Uh, good to see you. Matthew chapter four, uh, verse one through four is where we'll be. Uh, and we're going to talk from the message Bible. That's right. Eugene Peterson's message Bible uh, because of the wording of the text. So when you get your copy of the word of the Lord, let us know that you are ready. Give us some hearts. Let us know you're ready. You're ready to dig in whatever device you have. You are ready. Let's get ready to go. Uh, look at Matthew chapter four, verse number one through four. All right. All right. We should have everybody in now. Come on, Cyber Sanctuary. Let's go ahead and get our cyber hugs out of the way. Uh, this is one of our favorite parts of the service. Yes. Go ahead. Get. Let's get ready to get our cyber hugs. Come on, let's go. Let's try it. Let's try it. I need everybody. Everybody. Y'all ready? Let's go. One. That's one. Come on, let's go again. We got seven more. Two. I need to see you doing it. I need to see you. This is the last day of the month. Come on. Three. Yes. Come on. Come on. Let's end it right. Four. I believe everybody deserves at least eight. Come on. Five. That's grace. That's grace. We're right there. Come on. Come on, number of man, let's go six. Let's go seven, perfection, completion. And here's to our new beginning. Let's go eight. Let's go eight. Come on, hold it, squeeze it, squeeze it. Amen. Good to see you. Make sure you're sharing the video. Tag somebody. Let's communicate. Let us know where you're watching from. It is good to see each one of you on tonight. Matthew chapter four, verse one through four in the message Bible says next, Jesus was taken into the wild by the spirit to test him. I think the King James version says he was led into the wilderness. Listen to what Eugene Peterson's message Bible says. He was taken into the wild by the spirit to test. The devil was ready to give it. Jesus prepared for the test by fasting 40 days and 40 nights. That left him, of course, in a state of extreme hunger. Verse number three, which the devil took advantage of in the first test, saying, since you're God's son, speak the word and turn these stones into loaves of bread. Jesus answered by quoting Deuteronomy. It takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of word from God's mouth. And I want to stop right there. I want to talk for a few moments with this thought in our mind. Wherever you are or whatever you're in, the word will get you out. I want to say that again. Wherever you are or whatever you may be in, the word will get you out. I, I want to start uh, this lesson tonight uh, by talking about somebody that we may be familiar with if you if you're. Uh, familiar with football or you're a fan of football, you may know this gentleman that won the uh, Heisman Trophy in 2014, Marcus Mariota, uh, was picked by the Tennessee Titans. But he won the uh, Heisman Trophy, and he was projected at that time to be the number one pick coming out. This was prior to the draft, but he was projected by many to be the number one draft pick. And one of the statements that Kirk Herbstreet made, who was an ESPN analyst, he said, and I quote, although he is a great quarterback, the passes that he's made have been to his number one option. Whereas in the NFL, he's going to have to pass the ball sometimes to the number two or number three receiver. He says Mariota will only be great if a team picks him and allows him to sit out for a year and watch and learn 
under a veteran, more experienced quarterback before they thrust him into action, unquote. Now, notice what he says. He's only going to be successful if he's allowed to sit out and learn behind a more veteran, experienced quarterback. And then after a year being up under his belt, he might be ready so that he can work out some of the weaknesses and blind spots in his game. I say that because our kingdom nugget tonight, and I want you to get this because this is the premise for the lesson. And that is this to walk in excellence or to walk in my assignment with excellence will require time. I want to say that again, to walk in my assignment, to walk in your assignment with excellence will require time. God gave us time, not friends. So, so pastor, but I have some friends. Well, you have friends because you took that time and invested it into those relationships, but God didn't give us friends. He gave us time. And as a result of the time he gave us, we in turn invested that into relationships that we've built over the years. So he give us time. We invest time into people that ultimately creates relationships that we enjoy because none of us think about this. None of us were born qualified. We had to become qualified. And the way we did that was a process and time was important. You, you ask Moses, he wasn't born qualified to be a deliverer he had to go through the desert David was not qualified to be king he went through seasons of struggle not only that he went through seasons of testing and Gideon went through seasons of difficulty in order to be used by God so I want to submit to us that time is so important in order for us to fulfill our assignment with excellence time time because it's during time that we're allowed to process and develop. So don't negate time because that's part of the process. One writer says there are seasons of meditation, separation, preparation, and agitation warfare. I want to say that again. An unknown writer says there are seasons of meditation, separation, preparation and agitation warfare so he says this which leads me to this principle as we look at the life of jesus and what he went through in the in the garden when he was being tempted in this particular case going into the wilderness in principle number one write this one down conquering temptation is a necessary step before elevation i want to say that again conquering temptation is a necessary step before elevation. Warfare, listen at this, warfare, spiritual warfare, is the last stop before preparation, but it's the first stop in manifestation. Let me say that again. Spiritual warfare, when we're combating against the enemy, it's the last stop in preparation, but it's the first stop in manifestation. Because we have to go through things that we conquer. Because if we don't conquer them, we have to repeat that test. And so we go through things that we conquer that would have, in other words, made us weak. So, so, so we conquer them. We conquer them. He, he had to go through temptation. And listen at this. Temptation is only temptation. When I'm allowed the opportunity to yield. It, it, it's it's kind of like talking to our kids, for those of you that have children. Um, you can't say that your child obeys you if they've never had an opportunity to disobey you because it's only when they're presented an opportunity to do something against what you've told them that you can say they obey because obedience in the face of an opportunity to disobey. So, so temptation is the same. Temptation is not really temptation because I like it, because I crave it. Temptation is only temptation when I like it, when I desire it, and it's available. And I have to make the decision to say yes or no. I cannot call it temptation if I don't like it. <laughs> I cannot call it temptation if I like it, but it's not available. Because it's only temptation when I like it, when I desire it. And it's available and I'm forced with the opportunity to make a decision to yield 
or to say no. So, so, so here it is. Jesus has an opportunity to yield. Look, look at the text. Jesus was led into the wilderness by the spirit to be tempted by the devil. Jesus knows what it feels like to go through temptation. And I want to say this because we know the word where it says there is no temptation that has taken us except that which is coming to man. We understand that everything that we're going through, and I want to tell somebody, whatever you're going through, Jesus himself went through it. Maybe not in particularity, but in principle. Let me say that again. Maybe not in particularity, but in principle, he's gone through everything that you and I have gone through, are going through, or will go through, and he's conquered it. And if he is in us, then we can conquer it too. So he understands what it feels like. And maybe if the spirit led him into a season where there was unresourceful or it was un, an unresourceful place. Listen at this. Maybe the spirit led him into a place that was unresourceful to be tempted by the very one who wants to take him out. <laughs> the, the spirit, not the enemy. The spirit leads Jesus into a wilderness to be tempted by the very one who wants to take him out. And look at what happened. If he leads him into the spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted by the one that wants to take him out, that should be encouragement for you and I to let us know that the devil is not employed by himself. He's actually subcontracted by God. I want you to get this. If he leads him into the wilderness to be tempted by the one that wants to take him out, but can't take him out, that only proves that the enemy doesn't have real power. God is still the employer. The enemy is just being subcontracted by God to build us up, to strengthen us, and for some of us to show us those areas where we're weak so that we can work on those areas. Listen at what it happens. He's led there, and he has to follow God's rule. God is talking to him. He's already spoken to him. Jesus spent time with his father. And I want to challenge us before temptation. We will always be confronted with an opportunity to build ourselves, build our faith up, build up our, our spirit, man, through prayer, through fasting and through spending time in the word. So here it is. He tells him there are certain things that you're going to go through. And as Jesus is in the wilderness, he's preparing to go through. What has already been prophesied over his life. And I want to encourage you because just like the old preacher told the young lady that, that was walking to, to the store. And every time she would go to church, she would leave and go to the store, the corner store. Her and a couple of her friends. And they would walk down the street and there was a pit bull in the yard right next to the corner store. Well, instead of crossing, the, instead of going past the dog, they would go all the way around the block go to the store and come all the way back around in order to get to the church. And, and one day he caught them outside and says, why would you all walk all the way around the block? And here's what the young lady said. There's a pit bull there. And every time we get close, he runs off the porch, scream, barking, loud, barking, very aggressive, showing us his teeth. And so we just decided to go the other way. And one day the preacher took them by the hand and walked with them. And as they're approaching the house, they begin to get nervous. They're squeezing his hand. Well, true enough, the dog comes off the porch, barking, yelling loud, teeth showing, very aggressive. And they just keep walking. And then all of a sudden, silence. And so the preacher stops with the young lady and they look behind. He says, see, he can only come so far because he's on the chain. No need to fear him. He can only come so far. And this is the assurance that you and I have as Jesus was being tempted, tempted. God was trying to show him he can only do so much. He, he can only come so far. Don't allow the loudness or the volume of the enemy to cause you to be disturbed when you're going through. You have the word on the inside. And if the word is on the inside, he can only come so far. Before that word rises up and begin to put him back in his place. So look at what happened. God always prepares us. He prepares us. Look at what happened. The timing of the temptation in verse number two. Jesus prepared for the test. Look at what it says. By fasting 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> he was about to go through a test and he prepared by fasting 40 days 
and 40 night. Let me give you principle number two. I need you to write this one down. Don't confuse isolation with emotional emptiness. Come on, write this down. I want to give you a second to write that down. Don't confuse isolation with emotional emptiness. God always prepares us before the test. And if I fall into temptation, hear me, it's not because I wasn't prepared. It was because I did not prepare myself during the season of preparation. Can I say this to us? Wednesday night Bible study or whoever's watching Tuesday night, whenever you, you, you log on to your service or for those that are members of Kingdom Builders, Wednesday night, that's preparation. Sunday morning, preparation. Friday night family talk, preparation. Midday motivations, preparation. Anytime it's an opportunity to hear the word of the Lord, it's preparation. Don't, don't minimize the seasons that you have prep that you've afforded to be prepared because it's those seasons that's going to sustain us during drought seasons. It's those seasons that's going to sustain us when you can't get to the word. Think about this. Eight, nine months ago. We, it wouldn't have been a big issue. We didn't know why we were going to church so much. Why on Sundays? Why on Wednesdays? Why Tuesday nights? Why going to a second service on a Sunday? Not knowing we were being prepared. We were being built up because something was coming that was going to cause us not to be able to assemble ourselves together. So, so don't minimize those seasons of preparation. God always prepares us. Spending time with God, Bible studies are so important because it builds us up so that we can fight the enemy. Look at verse number three, which the devil took advantage of in the first test. Since you are God's son, speak the word and turn these stones into bread. Can I give us principle number three? I need you to get this one. Here it is. Don't get fooled by a good thing that comes at the wrong time. And I can end Bible study right there. <laughs> don't get fooled it's getting good to me now <laughs> by a good thing that comes at the wrong time pastor make sense of that temptation is not just money it's not just sex it's not just alcohol sometimes we can be tempted with good things a good job can be a temptation Pastor, how can it be a temptation? I mean, I've been praying for God to, to, to bless me financially. I've been praying for God to, to uh, give me a promotion on the job. I mean, I've been praying for God to open up the business opportunity for me. So how can that be a temptation if it's going to pull me away from God? If it's going to pull me away from God, it's a temptation. Now, I'm not saying you can't do it. No, no, no. I'm not. Don't, don't get it confused. I'm not saying don't go after it. As long as I can prioritize God, number one, and have the balance to be able to handle it. And I say that because sometimes the enemy will show us things that we like. So he'll give me the raise if it's going to pull me away from God. He'll give me the new car if it's going to pull me away from God. He'll let me get the house. If it's going to pull me away now, how, how does having a new job or a new house pull me away from God? If I have to work triple time overtime in order to maintain it. So now I don't really have time for the things of God because I have to do what I have to do to make sure I'm able to enjoy what I say God bless me with. So, so you have to be careful. You have to be careful not to get fooled by a good thing that comes the wrong time let me say this for the adults that's watching uh, 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 uh being intimate sex is a good thing within the boundaries of marriage but if i operate in that area outside of that it's bad time <laughs> it, it is bad time it, it, see something good it, something can be good for us good to us but we have to operate within the boundaries. And God knows the enemy can send something good our way at the wrong time. And, and so we have to be careful not to get fooled. Here it is. Never take a shortcut to solve an immediate problem at the expense of your long range goals. I know you have dreams. I know you have visions. Don't take a shortcut. J Jesus could have, and I'm sure, as he told him while hanging on the cross, he could have called legions, 12,000 angels would have come by 
and, and took care of him, got him off, if that's what he wanted to do. But he wasn't going to take a shortcut. He, he knew what his assignment was and he knew in order to fulfill his purpose and walk in excellence, it meant he had to go through every necessary step in order to fulfill that and redeem man back to him. So never take a shortcut. His long range goal was to die for the sins of the world. His long range goal. And he did not cut corners in order to fulfill that. Here's the kingdom shout and I'm done right here. Verse number three says, if you are the son of God. If you are the son of God, look at what verse three says, if I need you to see this, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, he tells him, if you are the son of God, can, can, can I give us the kingdom of shout? Jesus never tried to prove to the devil who he was. So, oh, let me say it again. He, he never tried to prove to the devil who he was. Look at what the devil says. If you're the son of God. But he never tries to prove who he is. So here's your kingdom shout. I need you to get this one. I don't have to defend who I am when I know who I am. <laughs> oh, let me say that again. You don't have to defend who you are when you know who you are. And if you know who you are, it doesn't matter who don't know you. You need to know you. And Jesus plainly shows us here, why do I have to prove myself to somebody who don't know me when I know who I am? And even if he knows me, that's not the issue. As long as I know who I am, I don't have to prove it to anybody. I want to talk to somebody. When you know who you are, you don't have to prove who you are to anybody. Let them think what they want. But pastor, I don't want him thinking anything negative about me. It's OK. That's just your reputation. <laughs> that's just that's what they think. What's important is what he knows. And if he knows who you are and if you know who you are, you don't have to prove yourself to the enemy or anybody that tries to trap or trick you. I pray you've been blessed tonight. I really pray you've been blessed about this teaching. And here it is. Whatever you're in. Whatever you've gone through, whatever you're going through, do know this, that the word can get you out. Jesus quoted the word and that's what delivered him from being in that wilderness. How did he overcome temptation? Through the word. How are we going to overcome temptation? Through the word of God. I pray you've been blessed. I pray you've been blessed and I pray something was said that ministered to you in a special way. It's Wednesday night in the word. And you know what? We get to honor someone every Wednesday night. Our health care, our professionals and first responders. Thank you so much. I do want to uh, commend you for, for nominating. And I want to just encourage you to keep doing that. If you know some that work in the healthcare profession uh, or some first responders, uh, we want you to nominate them. The information will be on the flyer on the screen. Uh, text that information, their name. Uh, you can text it to the information on the screen or you can email us. Email us and uh, we want to honor them every Wednesday night. We've set out as a church family to honor at least one person uh, by giving them a $25 gas card as well as lunch on KBB. And so we need your help to do that. Uh, they do not have to be a member of Kingdom Builders. Uh, we just want to honor them and let them know that we appreciate uh, the sacrifices that they're making every day to keep us safe. So uh, I just want you to do that for us. My time is up. Minister Stephanie is getting ready to let you know who our health care professional and first responder recipient is. And I look forward to seeing you this Sunday. Listen, we're starting a brand new series uh, entitled I Think I Know My Pastor. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I know him. I, I think. Uh, but before the series is over, you're going to know who your pastor is, whether it's male or female. Tune in Sunday. Uh, we start the new series. I'm looking forward to it. It's pastoral uh, month all over the world. Uh, October is. And, and we just want to dive into it, making sure we understand who he or she is uh, in the kingdom and to us. And I uh, will get a chance to get into that on this Sunday. So I'm looking to see you uh, Sunday morning at 8.55 a.m. Listen, Minister Stephanie is coming in just a moment to let you know who our recipient is. I love you. We're praying for you. And until tomorrow morning, midday motivation, make sure you tune in uh, at 12 noon and let's keep building the kingdom one person at a time. Let's build. I would like to announce this week's first care.
uh, professional and healthcare worker of, for this week. It goes to uh, Bernie Hawkins. She is a RN for UA, at UAB Hospital. Congratulations. We'll have a $25 gift card and lunch on KBB. Woo!